The final week of the preseason is officially underway, and that means teams will soon have to take their roster from 90-man to a 53-man roster. This year, it's changed. It's completely different, where they have one final cut day, where basically, well, what is that, 40-some 40, 40 people or 30-some people are going to get cut, bam, in a blink of an eye. That also means that trades are likely going to happen this week and next week and one potential trade that could happen for the minnesota vikings is for quarterback uh from the 49ers trey lance former minnesota native from uh played at ndsu in college for the bison goes and gets drafted high overall i believe it was like third overall by the niners who traded up to get him by the way and then they had this guy mr irrelevant brock purdy take over after trey lance broke his ankle and stuff like that and now brock purdy basically well, their head coach, Kyle Shannon, said, Brock Purdy's our starter, and the only way he's not going to be our starter is if he melts at practice, okay? So Brock Purdy, set in stone, starting quarterback for the 49ers. They also brought in Sam Darnold, who I guess is just slicing and dicing, looking better than what Trey Lance has been looking like. Now, Trey Lance hasn't looked bad by any means. The media is kind of blowing it out of proportion. Had an okay preseason game, but it's clearly uh, stated that Trey Lance is probably going to get traded one one day or another, okay? It's going to happen this season unless Sam Darnold isn't looking great, but she's looking okay. But a lot of teams are going into the season with three quarterbacks because there's that new quarterback rule. But, but, Trey Lance has been mentioned as a trade target for our Minnesota Vikings before. And a potential deal makes more sense now than ever considering Lance's arrow is currently pointed downward. Now, the former number three overall pick cost the 49ers two first rounders and a third rounder to move up nine spots in the draft in 2021. Now, after a poor preseason opener that appears vastly better on paper than it was in reality, the Niners res uh, reserve quarterback looks like he could find himself uh, a third string option behind starter Brock Purdy and potential backup Sam Darnold when the regular season opens in September. Number three overall, now a third stringer, not really great. The 49ers, I guess, apparently missed, but that doesn't mean he's a bad quarterback by any means. I think he'd be pretty good in our Viking system. Now, Lance is pretty clearly on the trade block in San Francisco. I think that I think we can all agree on that one. The issue is the price. At this point, however, the Niners have very little leverage. If the Vikings can get in the game for Lance for a day two pick, perhaps a mid or late third round selection, the price could make sense on both sides. Okay, it could it could make sense. Now he's still pretty spendy and stuff like that. I would really like this addition just for the sole fact that I still believe Trey Lance is better than Nick Mullins. He's definitely better than what we've seen out of Jaron Hall, which I mean, it sucks that he's been playing with the third third stringers, fourth stringers. He hasn't really looked good on paper. Both preseason games, he came up or came in the game, and well, the Vikings lost. Okay, now I'm not saying it's his fault, but Jaron Hall doesn't look good. He doesn't look ready to play in the NFL. He's going to be a backup at some point, maybe not even in the NFL at some point. Okay, and Nick Mullins, he's okay, but I still think Trey Lance has a higher ceiling than Nick Mullins as a backup quarterback or potentially as our franchise guy. Look, look. The Vikings have Nick Mullins as our backup under contract for the next two years, but can get out of the deal for the cost of just 375000 dead cap hit uh, next spring. While Mullins has proven himself to be a viable number two quarterback, he's not the future in Minnesota. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the future quarterback, the franchise quarterback for our Minnesota Vikings. It's not Kirk Cousins. Well, it could be, but we didn't extend him. We're not going to look to extend him until after the season, if they're that, even if that's a possibility. Now that leaves fifth round rookie Jaron Hall, who who head coach Kevin O'Connell likes, but who is far from a sure bet to secure the keys to the franchise after one year. I'd say very, very far, okay? I'm, it, it doesn't look good for him at all. Now one year during which Hall is likely to spend most, if not all, of his playing time behind Cousins and Nick Mullins, all right? Jaron Hall, going to be the third string quarterback, but you trade for Trey Lance, Jaron Hall probably doesn't find himself on an NFL team or on an NFL roster, at least at this point in the season. I still think it would make a lot of sense because Adolfo Mensa, Kwesi Adolfo Mensa, and Kevin O'Connell need to start taking swings on quarterbacks in the next 12 to 18 months, okay? And Lance is a quality candidate. He's a dual threat player with real draft pedigree who could cause a career reset in his home state. There would be little pressure on a young signal caller in 2023 as he learns behind Cousins and under Kevin O'Connell. Okay, now look, some of you guys are like, no, we don't need Trey Lance. He's not that good. What has he done? Blah, blah, blah. 
He's still a better backup, okay? If Kirk Cousins goes down, would you want Nick Mullins in the game or do you want Trey Lance in the game? I want Trey Lance, okay? And there's still a, a pretty good chance that Trey Lance could end up being our franchise guy. He could end up getting better, a little reset in his home state, under the home team that I'm not sure if he cheered for as a kid, but I assume he did because he's from the area. This could be a complete reset for him. Kevin O'Connell, quarterback, former quarterback in the National Football League, could help him make that transition, make that change. We could let him, you know, kind of let loose a little bit. And I'm not saying San Francisco doesn't have the same type of talent at wide receiver. Cause, I mean, they they do in some cases, but Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison might be a dog. TJ Hawkinson at tight end. Yeah, they have George Kittle, KJ Osborne as, as well in our slaughter as our number two receiver. So it's kind of a similar situation, but I think Kevin O'Connell's offense would let him let loose a little bit more. And I know the contract would be spending and stuff like that, but he needs a little bit of a reset. I'm not saying this trade is going to happen, but trades are going to happen this week and next week. And this is just one of those possible trades that possibly could happen. You guys can let me know in the comments what you think about this. Do we stay away from Trey Lance or do we bring home the native from Minnesota back to Minnesota and uh, see what happens? Maybe he could be our franchise quarterback. Maybe he just goes on a run and, and becomes great, a superstar, you know, a pro bowler. Uh, and, well, who knows? You guys let me know in the comments what you think about this move. Drop a like and subscribe to the channel. It would be much, much appreciated. Have a great rest of your night, folks. And Skull Vikes.